Hi, my name is Elizabeth Bloof, and uh, I own MCV Communications. I am the chief minion, and I'm here today with uh, Wise Word Wednesdays. And Wise Word Wednesdays was born a few months ago when I started reading a ton of business books. And I've been doing that for, I mean, I'm an avid reader. I've been reading for years and years. But business books came into being because I became an entrepreneur. And that took off in earnest in, uh, in 2014 and realized there was a lot, a lot that I didn't know. And I didn't have time to go and meet everybody I needed to meet. I didn't have the money to meet everybody that I needed to meet. But I could benefit through their wise words and the ones that they share through their books. So I read a wide variety of, of authors. I don't have any particular favorite. I don't have an attachment. I'm not paid to do this. It's just something that I like to share because I know we're all watching our time and our money. And I want to give you a good value um, and make some recommendations so that hopefully they'll be helpful to you. So what I'm reading this week is one that I actually picked up from Value Village with, you know, if you're watching this anywhere from other than Southern Ontario, although I don't know how far they stretch, Value Village is a local thrift shop that sells a variety of things. But one of the things they have is a fantastic used book section. I've also got a local bookshop over here in Burlington that I go to, and she's got a terrific business section as well. I've got everything from John C. Maxwell to Gary Vaynerchuk to Chip and Dan Heath to yeah, I just picked up some great Cotter books, and this one in particular ta -da, is Execution, The Discipline of Getting Things Done by Larry Bossidy and Ram Sharon, and it's not what I expected. Um, I was actually looking for information on how to manage time better and, and how to execute on projects better, and when I started getting into this, it really wasn't what I expected, but I'm really glad I read it. So that's one of the reasons it's made it on to Wise Word Wednesdays. I'm kind of picky about what I choose to share with you. If I read a book and it sucks, um, I share very quickly that it sucks and you should avoid it. Um, other than that, I try to read from the book to give you a flavor of how it's written and, and what happens and sort of give you an overview and, and my experience with it. This one's written really, really well. Um, I really enjoyed it. It is actually written for more of a middle management to C-suite level. It's about leadership style and leadership development and how that impacts the ability of an organization to execute. Doesn't matter what the project is, doesn't matter what you're doing. If you don't have these three core values and if you are not an effective manager, your organization's ability to execute is impacted. That starts to go into growth and scale and team building and, and a whole whack of stuff that I found really, really interesting. So I'm a solo printer. Um, I do have one person on contract, Erica Jones, who's amazing, and she helps me out with a variety of things. But I am looking to hire more staff. I am looking to grow, and I'm getting to that point where I do need to hire an executive assistant and, and a few other things. And I've been fortunate to be involved with Spark the Change Toronto, who is also responsible for sparking my interest, sorry about the pun, in uh, reading and learning more about leadership and management styles. Because probably like you, um, I worked in a variety of jobs and careers where I had leaders who were at a variety of levels of efficiency and effectiveness. And so I've been influenced by the really, really awful, horrible ones. And just as equally as I have been influenced by the really great ones, and obviously, the inspiration is to be like the great ones and to avoid sucking like the really bad ones, because nothing worse than, you know, basically recovering from PTSD because a boss doesn't know how to be a leader. So I'm going to read you um, a few bits. And again, my, and if you've watched my other one, I'm, this is a new series for me and a, and a new format of looking into the camera. So I apologize if I tend to look away. It's what I do. If a book is successful for me, there's a ton of stickies. Um, and this one's got highlights on top of that. So that tells you that it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So it flips back and forth. One of the other things I really like about it, yes, reading glasses, is that um, they flip back and forth between the male and female pronoun. And uh, from what I've seen anyway, unless a book is written from a female perspective, you know, it's typically assumed that it's going to be a man reading the book. I got to tell you guys, it's 2017. I need to get up to speed. So this book is actually, I believe, from 2003, 2002. And so far, the oldest business book I've read is Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And considering that was written in the 1920s to 1930s and still holds true, and I would say that a lot of the giants in business today or business leadership are standing on the principles that Napoleon Hill developed with Andrew Carnegie, 
I would say that just because something is a little bit older doesn't mean it's necessarily invalid or invaluable or valuable, invaluable, unvaluable. Anyway, so we're going to start here. Um, the heart of execution lies in three core processes, the people process, the strategy process, and the operations process. Every business and company uses these processes in one form or another, but more often than not, they stand apart from one another like silos. People perform them by rote and as quickly as possible so they can get back to their perceived work. Typically, the CEO and his senior leadership team a lot less than half a day each year. Oh, that sucks. He doesn't write that. I'm just saying that. To review the plans, people, strategy, and operations. Typically, too, the reviews are not particularly interactive. People sit passively watching PowerPoint presentations. They don't ask questions. They don't debate. And as a result, they don't get much useful outcome. People leave with no commitments to the action plans they've helped create. And this is a formula for failure. You need robust dialogue to surface the realities of the business. That is a really powerful statement. You need robust dialogue to surface the realities of the business. You need accountability for results discussed openly and agreed to by those in responsible to get things done and reward the best performers. You need follow through to ensure the plans are on track. And surprisingly, I mean, this has been my beef with managers forever is that they, some of the ones that I've had, some have been amazing. My, my, um, Manager at Girl Gods of Canada, Barb Ishibashi, was fantastic, loved her to bits. There wasn't anything she would ask us to do that she wasn't willing to do herself. She gave very honest feedback. Um, one of the best things she ever said to me was, I never have to find out about your mistakes from somebody else. You are always the first to come to me and, and let me know you've made a mistake and how you've fixed it. And I took that feedback to heart and um, have built on that and continue to do that. So if I make a mistake with a client, if I do whatever... They don't hear about it from anywhere else. I don't try and hide it. I don't try and muff it up. I am a leader of myself and of my organization. And I set the example that mistakes are okay. Mistakes happen. Own it. Fix it. Move on. And there is a, um, a statement in here that I'll, I'll find again. Leaders set the tone of the conversation for the organization that they're leading. And if you are closed off, if you are not open to constructive feedback, debate, discussion, what have you, your organization will crumble. It, it, it just will. And I have worked for people who are such ineffective leaders and so afraid to embrace the strengths of their staff, so afraid of their position. They're such unconfident people. I don't even know if that's a word, but it should be that they will not allow for any conversation or debate. They will not allow for any opinion other than yes. And, and I don't do I don't do yes well, not if I don't mean it. So here we see, oh, here it is. See, I'm so smart. I have my sticky already here. Only the leader can set the tone of the dialogue in the organization. Dialogue is the core of culture and the basic unit of work. How people talk to each other absolutely determines how well the organization will function. Is the dialogue stilted, politicized, fragmented, and butt covering? <laughs> I love the fact that these really intelligent, high-end CEO trainers and leaders are using the term butt covering or is it candid and reality based raising the right questions debating them and finding realistic solutions if it's the former as it is in all too many companies reality will never come to the surface if it is to be the latter the leader has to be on the playing field with his management team practicing it consistently and forcefully and one of the major things that larry bossidy talks about within this book is the fact that you need to get down on the ground with your people you know, I recognize that there were the days of the glass ceiling, I'm sorry, not the glass ceiling, but the glass corner office and leaders do as I do, not as I say. And it just doesn't exist. You don't engender um, trust. You don't create trust. You don't create uh, a mutually beneficial conversation with your staff. And therefore, when things are going sideways, you'll be the last to know. You'll be the first fired because it comes down to you but you'll be the last to know because you are not talking to the very people who are the ones in the know, who are the ones who can give you the feedback that you need to create a successful organization. And I really, really appreciated that in this book that um, some of these things that I've believed for many, many years, it's not just me being a crazy person. It's, it's actually good practice. It's good practice to have an open door. It's good practice to talk straight with people constructively. Don't be a jerk. But welcome that feedback, ask for it, pursue it, 
Because regardless of how open your door is, regardless of how approachable you think you are, if you are the one in charge, it can be really hard for people to approach you. It can be really hard for people to start those what are potentially perceived as, as difficult conversations. And so by asking the hard questions first and, and putting it out there and bringing the realities to the surface, you are showing that you are approaching your organization and your leadership role with eyes wide open and that you want to succeed and that you recognize that you've hired these valuable, intelligent people to help you achieve just that. So he talks in chapter three here, building block one, the leader's seven essential behaviors. And this is probably where most of my stickies come from because once, um, once it got past the strategy process and into the operations, it's not really applicable to my business right now. I'm just, I, which I know sounds odd. Um, so I, I took more out of this middle section of the book than I did through the rest of it. So glasses again. Sorry if you're listening to this on podcast. It's a, it's a glasses kind of day. What exactly does a leader who's in charge of execution do? How does he keep from being a micromanager caught up in the details of running the business? There are seven essential behaviors that form the first building block of execution. Know your people and your business. Insist on realism. Set clear goals and priorities. Follow through. Reward the doers. Expand people's capabilities and know yourself. And that's a, a huge one. And I think that's one thing that I've really run into with ineffective leaders is that they're either not aware of how unapproachable and how ineffective and how dastardly they are, or they just don't give a shit. I mean, you know, that's option B usually comes to the surface at some point. And we get to this part here and it talks about how you need to be um, aware of your strengths and weaknesses and how you need to, to do this. And it says here, a solid long-term leader has an ethical frame of reference that gives her the power and energy to carry out even the most difficult assignment. She never wavers from what she thinks is right. This characteristic is beyond honesty or beyond integrity, beyond treating people with dignity. It's a business leadership ethic. And that's not to say that if you have a leader, I don't have to argue that point for just a second, because if you have a leader who believes they're right, and they're not, and yes, in their minds they're right, but what they want to do is not great. What they want to do is unethical. They still might believe they're right, but you should still have the opportunity to tell them so. And in one of my positions, I chose to do that. Um, I chose to debate the validity of the person's statement and, and their perception of being right and what is right and um, caused a problem, I have to say. That's why I'm an entrepreneur now. So I don't have to be a jerk or put up with them. So self-mastery. When you know yourself, you can master yourself. You can keep your ego in check, take responsibility for your behavior, adapt to change, embrace new ideas, and adhere to your standards of integrity and honesty under all conditions. Self-mastery is the key to true self-confidence. So true. Self-confident people contribute the most to dialogues. Their inner security gives them a methodology for dealing with the unknown and for linking it to the actions that need to be taken. They know they don't know everything. They are actively curious and encourage debate to bring up opposite views and set up the social ambience of learning from others. They can take risks and relish hiring people who are smarter than themselves. I have heard that and read that in so many places. I, I firmly believe in that. So when they encounter a problem, they don't have to whine, cast blame, or feel like victims. They know they'll be able to fix it. And the book goes on, talking about the various levels of execution. Um, obviously talking about customers and markets and strategy and, and how the, um, the people who are involved in executing this strategy are, are being coached and the opportunity to be a coach. Um, it actually talks quite a lot about the review process, which I find really interesting because I've had really positive review systems and I've had really negative review systems. And I've also watched people who've gone through the review system still get ahead regardless of the fact they suck. And I've never understood that, never for the life of me have understood that. And I, as an employer and potentially a large employer, that's not going to happen. I'm absolutely going to sit down with somebody and do the review. And I am absolutely going to be talking to them constructively. But if you're sucking, we're going to talk about why you're sucking and what we can do to help you suck less. And, and he does talk about that in here, which is awesome. He talks about coaching and training and teaching and 
recognizing if somebody would do better in another position and, and all of those things. So not blaming the person for failure within a position because he recognizes also, uh, Larry Bossidy within this book, that sometimes leaders make mistakes. And sometimes during an interview, what you think is going to be positive qualities within the position that you're hiring for actually turns out to be a negative or the person has come across with false confidence or what have you. And he does, re he does recommend in here, uh, which I can't find it right now, he does recommend asking some really unique questions in the review and assessment process during the interview to uncover some flaws that you might not otherwise see during the typical process. If I can find it, I'll put it in a blog post. But for right now, know that you should check out this book and see if you can figure it out from there. So see, one of the things they say here, in a good evaluation, the leader looks closely at how the people under review met their commitments, which people delivered consistently, which ones were resourceful, enterprising, and creative in the face of adversity, who had easy wins and didn't push for better results, and who met their commitments at the expense of the organization's morale and long-term performance. Nowhere is candid dialogue more important than in the people process. If people can't speak forthrightly in evaluating others, then the evaluation is worthless to the organization and to the person who needs the feedback. It's really interesting. Um, anyway, it goes on talking again about building on the cores, um, talking about breaking down the missions for long-term and short-term goals, how to execute that within the strategy process, um, how you can use the review of the strategy process to learn and develop people and identify within people you may not have otherwise seen by creating an open and candid um, uh, organization, strategic thinking that you may have uncovered, other problem solving skills that you may have uncovered, all of these things comes down to how the leader sets the tone for the conversation within the organization. Can't stress that enough, so amazing. Um, and what else have we got? That's pretty much it because it started to go into, you know, a deeper dive on organizational strategy, which doesn't apply to my business. So didn't get as much out of it. But if you're looking for a really interesting book on execution, um, it is by Jack Welch, who I know Simon Sinek has um, derided as, as not being a particularly nice leader. I think you can go both ways in leadership. I think you can do your organization a disservice by being too nice and not wanting to confront the reality, like bring the realities to the surface of the situation. And I think you can also be too mean. I haven't studied Jack Welch. I can't really, you know, comment on it. But in this particular instance, uh, I agree with most of the stuff they suggest around honest feedback. And if somebody's not able to execute within the job they're in, to move them somewhere else or offer them an opportunity to resign or leave or what have you. And that might sound harsh, but from another perspective, if you continue to allow somebody to flounder and fail within a position because you're not able to have that candid conversation and provide that feedback, that can be just as destructive to an employee um, as being an ass and, and micromanaging and what have you. So there comes time for tough conversation that has to happen. This book, Execution, The Discipline of Getting Things Done by Larry Bossidy and Ram Sharon, gives you some really terrific ideas on, uh, on how to have a candid conversation, how to handle the strategy review process, and how to implement um, in your organizational structure. So give it a shout. Give it a shout. Give it a look. Um, I'm not even sure where it's, I'm sure it's available online. It's, it's a really good book. Ram Sharon and Larry Bossidy are both, you know, valued um, business experts. So give it a try. Thanks so much for joining me today and, and read a long time. I know it can sound a little romper room, but I firmly believe that when you are looking to read a book, if you can hear the tone of the writing and it appeals to you, you're more likely to get involved and read it and give it a try. But that's it for today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's, uh, it's finally sunny here in Southern Ontario. So maybe I'll get my next business book out and go read outside. Anyway, this is Elizabeth Plouffe. Uh, I am the Chief Minion for MCV Communications. You can check me out on Twitter at MCV Comms. Same for Instagram. There's Facebook, MCV Communications. You can visit the website. You can do all that great stuff. On the website, you can go and check it out and see. Um, I've got the rest of my reviews on there for business books. So if you're interested in, in seeing what else I've talked about and learning more, I'm just going to make sure of what it's under because it's been a long time since I visited my own website. Isn't that sad? Um, fairly certain that it is under uh, 
Oh, look at that. If you spell communications wrong, you don't get the right thing. It's under wise words. And I've read a lot. Yeah. Under communications, go to wise word library. There's about 20 different reviews of different books where you can get them on Amazon. I've done some great ones. There's been some amazing books that I've been able to read um, from Elizabeth Berg, Scott Stratton, Dale Carnegie. Love Dale Carnegie. Just think he's awesome. Um, and, uh, and take a listen. So have a fantastic day, everybody. And I will talk to you soon.